Yes, yes, Kenya. Tamu sana, tamu sana, tamu sana, yes. Yesterday, Dennis Itumbi, taking to his social media accounts, had this to say. Dennis Itumbi, State House Watch, private cars moved from State House Garage, private staff moved, life and its moments in less than 48 hours. Hashtag Hustler Nation. Dennis Itumbi posted that yesterday, and the aim of that post was to create a false impression that President Uru Kenyatta was moving out of State House. He was vacating. And the aim of that was to convince Kenyans or to create a propaganda that already President Uru Kenyatta knew the verdict come Monday. And because the verdict was not to be on their side, he had started moving out of State House. That was the aim and intention of that post by Dennis Itumbi. And upon Dennis Itumbi posting that, quite a good number of William Ruto bloggers working under Dennis Itumbi started circulating images, photos of, of some lorries <laughs> moving things, mm -hmm. moving things. That post by Dennis Itumbi and those images that were being propagated by Tanga Tanga bloggers were proved to be fake. And interestingly enough, one of the leading publications seen as friendly to William Ruto and the Uda Brigade had this to say. The Star Kenya a section of Kenyans alleged that the images were of Uhuru's properties being moved of State House recently. Photos of Uhuru's properties allegedly being moved out of State House taken in 2013. That's the star. So it's clear that the photos and images Older bloggers under Dennis Itumbi were trying to circulate those were 2013 images. So Dennis Itumbi has been exposed as lying, same to the older bloggers working under Dennis Itumbi. In this video, ladies and gentlemen, I want to explain exactly what is happening behind the scenes. Why Dennis Itumbi is actually propagating lies at this juncture. Only remaining hours to the declaration, or rather to the verdict, by the Supreme Court of Kenya. Before we do that, in case you are watching us for the very first time, subscribe, give this video a like. Yes. Before we dig deep into our analysis, in case you are looking for reliable solar energy, contact Power Africa Solar. This is quite a reliable company that we have recommended quite a number of our fans here, and so far we have not received any kind or form of complaint. Just go to Google and Google Power Africa Solar. You'll get all their details upon which you'll get in touch with them. Very reliable, ladies and gentlemen. And now back to our main topic. That behavior by Dennis Itumbi and later supporting William Ruto proves and shows they are not aware of what will happen on Monday. They are in the dark. They are 50-50 not very sure because honestly i believe that if they were sure of the verdict of what was to happen on monday then they could have played it easy they could have relaxed they couldn't have been posting fake images they couldn't have been propagating 
lies and falsehood. That proves and convinces me beyond any reasonable doubt that William Ruto and his team, Dennis Itumbi included, they are in the dark. They are panicking. They don't know the verdict that will come from the Supreme Court on Monday. And if you look at it from another angle, I believe it's a fact, ladies and gentlemen, that the proceedings were aired live and, a mil and millions of Kenyans saw exactly what transpired at the Supreme Court. It was clear, ladies and gentlemen, in 2013, or in 2017, petitioned by Raila Odinga, one thing that led to the nullification of 2017 presidential election results were the processes. Not even whether Uhuru attained 50 plus 1% or not in 2017. It were the processes. The processes were not followed. In this year's 2022 petition, it's clear the law was breached by Wafula Chibukati single-handedly, taking control of the commission, telling results himself, and delegating some, or rather the role also to the secretariat, at the ex exclusion of four IBC commissioners, who are actually a, ma a majority. And in a 2017 ruling at the Court of Appeal, the court also established that the commission is not about the chair. In a situation where the commissioners cannot come up with a unanimous decision, decision has to be made by voting, upon which the majority vote becomes the position of the commission. It's clear Chebukati breached the law. So already, the process that was to give us the winner has already been breached. On that basis alone, I'm not just seeing any competent court of law upholding that kind of an election. I'm not just seeing that, ladies and gentlemen. And even that 50% plus one vote, it was not very clear. And I keenly listened to the to IBC and William Ruto's lawyers trying to explain on how William Ruto attained 50% plus one vote, it was not convincing, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm saying that without taking sides at all. If you look at the turnout, I'm very sure even the judges of the Supreme Court are even confused as to what was the real turnout in 2022 elections. I know they are not even sure what was the turnout because that 50% plus one vote, it primarily based on the turnout. Is the turnout, those who went to the ballot, or rather to cast their votes, I mean, is purely based on that. If you remove along, along the rejected votes, the turnout is the primary yardstick in determining if a candidate attains 50% plus one vote. The judges I know are even confused what was the turnout. On that basis alone, if we leave other legal arguments, that election cannot stand. The Supreme Court judges have no option, in my honest opinion. If the law is to be followed, they have no option but to nullify the presidential election. And not only to nullify it, but to penalize Chebukati and some of the rogue IBC officials who are also in that mess. Mm. In fact, Chebukati overturned the will of a majority of Kenyans. Chebukati committed treason. Yes, and if the law is to be followed, there is no expectations, or rather, there is nothing Kenyans should expect apart from an nullification. But we are going to watch very keenly tomorrow. After the Supreme Court shall have given its verdict, we are going to do a detailed analysis on that. And without fear or favor, we'll explain exactly what happened and what transpired. 
I don't think Kenyans can render, rather surrender their fate to some very few corrupt individuals, individuals who, who instead of looking at the goodwill of Kenyans, they are just seeking the, their own selfish gains and interests. I don't think Kenyans can live in that fear of constantly putting their fate at the hands of such kind of greedy Kenyans. Be it at the Supreme Court, be it in IEBC, Kenyans have the right to be sure of any possible outcome to expect. And from what we saw, the only outcome Kenyans are expecting is an nullification. Yes. Before I conclude, in case you are watching us for the very first time, but so far you have not yet subscribed, kindly subscribe, give this video a like. And to our fans and subscribers here, I'm very much humbled, very grateful for the kind of support you're giving me here. God bless you. God bless Kenya. To any other person who wants to have a discussion with me or to share an information with me or even to support this channel, contact me from my number I've pinned on the comment section. You can channel your contribution to the number. And to any other person watching us outside Kenya, drop a comment, let us know from which part of the globe you are watching us from. And even before I forget, one of our fans in this forum, by the name Rafael Mayeka, based currently in the United States of America, is selling a parcel of land, 50 by 100, in Westlands Ngata Nakuru, price is 1.5 million Kenya shillings. In case you are interested, reach out to Rafael Mayeka on his phone number plus 1669-288-4909. Reach out to him on that number. The land is in Westlands Ngata. Nakuru, the price is 1.5 million, land size is 50 by 100. Reach out to him for a possible negotiation and even to seal the deal. God bless you. God bless Kenya. Let's meet in our next analysis.